you can't touch this. My, 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 my music hits me so hard, it makes me sick. Oh, hello. Sorry to burst in on you like this. Okay, if we stop here for a bit. Benjamin Franklin demonstrates leadership by founding the first circulating library in the United States, which enabled the wealthy upper class to check out books in the short term. Much later on, his leadership of founding the first U.S. library caused public libraries to become a natural part of a town or city, creating a lasting legacy. Most Americans in the 1730s couldn't regularly access books. Books in early America were rare and expensive because there were no public libraries. Only the very wealthy upper classes had access to literature. This is where Benjamin Franklin's leadership comes into play. On July 1st, 1731, Franklin and a group of members from the Junto, a philosophical association, drew up articles of agreement to form a library. They would eventually become known as the Library Company. Finally, 50 subscribers invested 40 shillings to start a library. Members also promised to donate 10 shillings more every year to buy additional books and to help maintain the library. They even came up with a motto. Translated from its original Latin, it roughly means, to support the common good is divine. In 1732, the company's first book order was sent to London. James Logan, William Penn's secretary, helped to pick out the books because he was considered the best judge of books in these parts. Also, he had the largest library for his own personal use in Pennsylvania, and he was very well educated in numerous subjects and languages. Several of the first books were of religious and educational topics, but they also had a selection of political, philosophical, and business books. The library was open from Saturday afternoons from 4 to 8 p.m. Members could also borrow books as they pleased. Non-members could also borrow books if they put up a surety, which is something of value used as leverage that could be sold if the book was not returned. The library's short-term legacy started in the 1740s when several other American cities also began forming their own libraries. Franklin said these libraries have improved the general conservation of Americans, made the common tradesmen and farmers as intelligent as the most gentlemen from other countries, and perhaps have contributed in some degree to the stand so generally made throughout the colonies in defense of their privileges. In simpler terms, Franklin thought that the library had an impact on the intelligence of everyday people, such as tradesmen and farmers. He also means that it's contributing to the conservation of the history of America. Philadelphia itself created new libraries, including the Union Library, founded in 1746. In 1769, the Union merged with the library company. Another example of the legacy of the library is with its help during the American Revolution. In this time, there was one highly popular book, Thomas Paine's Common Sense. Additionally, nine signers of the Declaration of Independence were also members of the library company. Benjamin Franklin, Thomas McKean, George Clymer, Francis Hopkinson, Benjamin Rush, Robert Morris, James Wilson, John Morton, and George Ross. Another important impact of the library is that in 1787, the library company offered delegates to the Constitutional Convention use of the library. Therefore, Philadelphia's library company was also the first Library of Congress, too. Long-term legacy examples of the library can be heard in my interview with two of Calvert County's public libraries' librarians, Robin Truslow and Beverly Izzy. Here follows some highlights of the interview. I asked, in your opinion, what is the long-term legacy of the library? They both agreed that the library paves the way for education. It also represents a place of safety so that everyone has a place to go. The library is also a place for learning. It also gives you a place to spend your childhood. 
With many resources and programs like Storytime, it allows new parents a place to find commonalities between other parents and their children. It gives you a good place to find your childhood friends. The library also has endless resources like databases. Also, in any library, there's something for everyone, even if reading isn't your thing. One of my other questions was, how do you think times have changed for the library since 20 years ago? Their answers include that it's more digital, more easily accessible, there's more resources, and many more selections, such as CDs, movies, ebooks, e-readers, and not just paper books. Benjamin Franklin is an excellent example of a leader. Without him, the legacy of the library would not exist. Today, the library company is located at 1314 Locust Street. I love the library because it's a place you can go for quiet and you can just read any kind of book you want. You know, in a time when you can really access most information at your computer, a library provides something different. The little black bats flew away out of the barn at the end of the day. And there they were all night long, sound asleep. Today, libraries can be seen and play a large role in several iconic films and movies, such as Harry Potter and Doctor Who. The library is in your mind. I know it's in my mind, but something's going inside. Oh, hello. Sorry to burst in on you like this. Okay, if we stop here for a bit. <gasps> Run! See that girl over there? That's Romilda Vane. Apparently she's trying to smuggle you a love potion. Really? Hey, she's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Okay, sorry. Therefore, the legacy of the library has influenced our media in several ways. It plays a very large role in our society today.